Conference Budget Day over here in the United Kingdom today. And this means, of course, that, well, like everybody, wherever you get your budget around the world, it means we're simply paying more for less. You know, you can dress it up any way you want, can't you? But that's really it, isn't it, you know? Now, our new 100 Day Plus Chancellor of the Exchequer, Rachel Reeves, has had a very rocky start called out for being a liar, basically claiming she was a chess champion, that she was an economist, all so many things, you know, borrowing sort of people's work for her own book, literally a tissue of lies, but suddenly now in charge of one of the world's biggest economies. Frightening to think, isn't it? But it's this really that I wanted to highlight, this particular story, because it, I think anybody, whether you're political or not, it really highlights exactly uh, where we are as people, as humans, as it were. And I think we can all learn a lesson from this. So as ever, let me explain to see you today. And as ever, thank you so much for taking the time out for joining me. Nice to have your company, whatever you're doing. It is a big thing, isn't it? You know, Budget Day, we all dread it because it's basically just taxes and more money and you're going to get less, but it's all going to be better in the future. But the future's always miles away and every government's the same thing isn't it or oh, it'll be better for you in the end will it will I be around to see it you know <laughs> it's just ridiculous isn't it but you see on the big political stage right now as we know over in the United States of America there is a massive election going on with just days to go now between Harris versus Trump now what I find baffling as a as sort of layman as it were I don't understand exactly if you've been in power a long time as have, of course, the Harris administration via Biden. Why have you not fixed these solutions? You know, your deputy. So that's really what baffles a lot of people over here. If you're already in there, why didn't you do it? Very similar to over here for 14 years with the Conservative Party. You know, it's a strange thing, isn't it? A lecturing and then basically saying, well, we'll fix it. Well, you're there fix it. Now, obviously, one of the most contentious people in that race is none other than the 45th president of the United States, Donald J. Trump. But this story really does say a lot about, as I say, the people we have now become, because it's combative, isn't it, on social media and in the media, everybody attacking each other. But maybe we should take a lesson from none other than His Majesty the King. Because what I found fascinating and speaking to someone very close to His Majesty was simply this, that when Mr. Trump had his first assassination attempt this year, one of the first people to literally put a call in to check that he was all right and everything was great and everything like that was none other than His Majesty the King. It took many, many hours later for, you know, the people around in the political world. Rishi Sunak was next. He was then currently, of course, still the British Prime Minister. But people over here in our brand new government took hours. And according to that source, even after a second assassination attempt, nobody from this political government over here bothered to get in touch to check that they were all right. Now, I'm sure the opposite way would be that somebody would be very concerned if it, you know, the tables were turned. And on both occasions, apparently His Majesty the King sent over some goodies and stuff like that just to cheer him up. Now, I think he would have done that on either side, don't you? And there's a lot to be said for that. And when you think about it, over here on Budget Day right now, our current British Prime Minister is polling minus 38. That is the worst polling ever for a British Prime Minister. How quickly he's become suddenly so disliked. And as I say, this isn't political. This is going to sort of like how we become these people. And I just kind of wanted to highlight that because I think it was a nice gesture. And when you think about it, His Majesty the King, when he's had his battles alongside, of course, uh, the terrible assassination of his uh, much loved uncle, Lord Louis Mountbatten. And then remember the gun going off at Troop in the Colour with his mother, Queen Elizabeth. They've also had those terrible sort of moments where what if? And I think really that's what paused and made King Charles think everybody deserves some kind of kindness. I know that's the sort of man he is, and that's what I've been told he is. And I think what you can actually think by that is on a very difficult day, whatever your politics, you do have to think we should remember to be kind to each other, whatever we may think about them individually. You agree? Neil Shaw in the very heart of London.